Hello and welcome to the show. I am here on Forza 6. I'm going to be mixing up the silly car builds a little bit. I got slightly bored of the brand's hatch circuit, wanted to go somewhere different, so have opted to go to the Patriot Alternate Layout for the Virginia International Raceway. This track is going to be a very different challenge to Brands Hatch. This is a very, very nasty circuit. Incredibly tight, incredibly twisty. 60% of the corners are completely and utterly blind. And, of course, we are still in the pouring rain. So, yeah, should be uh, should be an interesting one. Uh, before, of course, we can get onto the silly cars, though, I must set a benchmark. My vehicle for this is going to be the, the Maserati Gran Turismo Super Trofeo vehicle. Another full-on racing car, this one, though it does uh, only sort of come to it. starts off as, you know, I'm using the standard car here, it starts off as a high-ish S-Class car, so it's a little bit lower PI than the Lancia we had out last time, but it is still a fully-fledged racing vehicle. As you can see, we have got an almighty wing, maybe not quite as good as the Bentley, still not bad, though, on this car. We're going to have five laps around here to uh, try try and get this vehicle as fast as possible. I have been doing some testing with other cars around here just to learn the layout of this track because it is an arsey one. It is certainly an arsey one to uh, get the hang of in a track that I hadn't uh, driven beforehand. Now the first corner is a completely and utterly blind stop from a relatively decent size straight. We then wiggle our way through an incredibly low speed <laughs> section here. The Maserati does get changed direction uh, very well, which is uh, always nice. And we're going to get a big slide. Uh oh, ooh, okay, now we're fine. We're fine. Big slide down there. These next few corners. Oh, crap, I hit the puddle. I hit the puddle. That's going to go wrong. We're going to take out the uh, sign with us there. Yeah, you've got to be careful of that puddle on the on the inside. Oh, and then the, probably the slowest corner on the track is a very narrow chicane through there. Get on the power out of the other side. And after all of that comes the hardest corner of them all. This turn is such a deceptive bugger. I have so many <laughs> problems uh, when practicing trying to get the hang of that turn. It it kind of lulls you into a false sense of security. As you approach it, it looks like you have loads of time to break when you really don't. You want to get the car stopped quite nice and early for that turn and then get it through the corner and then worry about getting on the power. I have no doubt we will see a good few silly cars skating off on the grass uh, over there. And that's a lap of this uh, challenging challenging circuit oh that might be a little too late oh please stop Ooh, okay that, i got i got away with that i was um very much thinking <laughs> it was too late under braking there okay we, okay we, we can break pretty much at the end there are kind of those two lines of cones which are going to be the, the braking i guess the braking markers really for that uh, first corner because you just don't see it if you wait until you see the corner to get on the brakes you're going to plow into a wall about 160 miles an hour not a good day for anybody so yeah the, the cones are going to have to be used the rest of these corners fortunately you are going relatively slow while they are largely blind corners you are going relatively relatively slow so you can get them all under control and then it's just trying to judge where you have to go on the brakes for this corner i have got better at it <laughs> From, from earlier earlier practices, yeah, the amount of uh, cars I sent spinning off into the grass down there was uh, yeah, quite a lot. Quite a lot. And then around the final turn. The final turn is actually a little bit arsey as well. It kind of, on approach, you expect it to be much like the top of Road Atlanta, where there are two 90-degree uh, two corners. I was kind of expected it to be like that, but the first one's quite a lot shallower than the second one. It kind of all tightens up. Easy to get caught out with, uh, with all of that. Get the car stopped into the first corner. There we go. The other thing I have noticed about this track is it dirties the lap. Seemingly whatever you do through the opening section, like I'm not cutting the course, I'm not got a wheel on the grass or anything, it just dirties the lap through there, so I've given up caring, basically. There's nothing I can do about it, so screw it, really. Uh, <laughs> to try to take a slightly wider line to avoid the puddle. Not sure that it quite worked down there. Then get on the brakes for this one. Try and be neat, and apparently quite sideways is also an option for <laughs> for the Maserati. And now we've got to, again, get the braking right uh, through here. I think it might not even just necessarily be braking. I'm just not quite turning at the right point for that corner. Maybe that's where some of my, uh, my issues are coming from. And I did brake too early, completely fluffed up that uh, final corner. Well, still have a couple of laps. The first kind of, the first little sections aren't, too bad because you are really going very very slowly through them 
So, yes, it's not too bad. Uh, again, we've got a car as good as this with, you know, great brakes, great turning and so on. It's, yeah, not too bad at all. Although I may have... Oh. <laughs> really very much pushing my luck into that uh, that first corner there. I definitely am thinking second gear is probably the way to go out of uh, such slow speed turns. Oh, we're going to drift out a little bit wide. We're okay, though. We're okay. I might kind of have a little bit of a later turn in down there as well, just to try and uh, avoid the nasty, nasty puddle on the inside. And now we've got to get the... Ooh, God, don't get oversteered through there. Oh, that might have cost me some time. It has cost me a little bit of time. Right. Let's try and get this corner here sorted. Try and get... Uh, it's... Oh... <laughs> it's such an arsey turn. You keep thinking that you can take a lot of speed into it, and then every time you think you can, you suddenly realise you're in a lot of trouble. So you kind of back it off, and trying to find a balance through that turn is easily one of the hardest turns, I think I've driven on, on any racetrack certainly as kind of a turn to learn that one is a real a real bugger right this is the final run for the uh, super trofeo car can i get it any quicker i'm hoping so always hoping we can uh, we can go quicker if i don't get a big wiggle through the uh, the really low speed chicane that would be quite nice if we could not have a huge oversteering moment and not terrify myself with the uh, understeer as well uh, coming around that nasty fast left hand corner uh, that would also be uh, much appreciated right we have run a little bit wide avoided the worst of the puddles though now we're going to uh, fight the car on the brakes down here now don't get that big oversteering moment much better much better into the uh, chicane that time around now can i get more speed down here. No, I can't. I might have turned in a little too late. Still carried okay speed, though, uh, running a slightly wider line. And if you do run a slightly wider line, it does mean you avoid the worst of the puddle down there. It's not the uh, worst puddle we've seen on a track. That still goes to the Puddle of Doom at Sebring, but uh, you can still get in trouble across it, especially if you have got the wheels spinning coming towards it. It is across the line. Much better final sector. That's where the time was made up in that one. A much better final sector for the uh, for the Maserati that's our benchmark time that is the target for the uh, the silly cars to build it's uh, it's a tough circuit this one I think it's a very very demanding track we have got a longer straight here but some really narrow corners some very low speed acceleration zones gonna be interesting interesting for the other uh, silly car builds i do like this maserati though this is a good race car good fun good fun thing to drive handles itself very well even around the demands of a circuit like this one and the first silly car to uh, be made for virginia is going to be the mercury coupe one of the oldest cars in forza is going to be tackling this new very demanding circuit now the mercury is going to have a relatively high amount of power i'm assuming this car is going to get the nascar engine uh, the choices that we do have though are the 7 liter v8 hemi the 5.2 liter v10 actually surprised to see the v10 as an option for this car but there we go or the the 5.9 liter v8 racing essentially the nascar engine haven't used this in a vehicle for a little while so that is one we're going to be going for and it's the most powerful option out of all of these the v10 is a little bit lighter but it's going to be about 80 or 90 horsepower down on this one so we're going to go with the nascar engine in here so we're going to be getting essentially a thousand horsepower out of our mercury coupe that's uh a lot of power for the car to try and keep under control in very soggy conditions. Uh, aero parts, I love how the, the rear wing makes 20 pi, almost 20 pi on this car. It's a massive amount. Tires up next, of course, some racing tires. Kind of, kind of a shame not to have the white walls anymore on the vehicle, we'll be honest. But... Uh, we, we, we want the grip. We want the uh, the racing compound tyres on here. We do get some decent front tyres, actually. 265 is not bad on the front of the coupe. And on the rear, we're going to... Ooh, that's nice. 355. Some big, big tyres on here. Right. We might actually get some half-decent traction from this car, maybe. Fingers crossed, at least. They are, that's in, some impressive tyres on here. Of course, we're going to be wanting, well, just about everything on the vehicle uh, through here. So we'll be sticking on the gearbox, the driveline. Uh, driveline actually saves some some decent decent weight 
and we're going to be wanting a diff because we don't want a one tire fire our way around the course and now onto the handling parts of course uh, maybe to stand a chance we will get some uh, uh, some some race brakes that saves a lot of weight that there's like 200 pounds of weight saved from the <laughs> In the moment my brain kind of I got confused it was showing it was lighter but it was gay I didn't realize we'd, we'd lost quite so much weight from uh, from all of that and uh, yeah of course a race a front and rear anti roll bars this isn't going to be the lightest car by any means uh, it's probably going to come out my doubt will I don't know 2800 ish maybe um, maybe not even that the roll cage is going to add a fair amount um, yeah it's gonna have a bit more weight about it can be useful sometimes uh, oh, yeah, 2,800, relatively, <laughs> relatively accurate with that one. Um, yeah, having a little bit more weight can be helpful for a little bit of added stability. But, um, yeah, of course, too much weight, you start killing acceleration and braking. Uh, we're going to finish off 795 PI, so it's uh, slightly higher than the Maserati, about 770, uh, with near enough 1,000 horsepower in here, uh, 783 foot-pounds of torque, quite a lot of torque as well from this engine, and the vehicle weighing just under 2,800 pounds. Control is going to be uh, the big thing with this. I suspect we might be... Um, yeah, quite quite sliding. We do have some big tyres, but uh, this is still a very, very tight, twisty course. So the Mercury Coupe gets the honour of being the first very silly car to tackle this particular circuit. If we can keep it pointing in the right direction and off the grass, I think we'll probably be doing quite well. That's what, uh, <laughs> that's what I'm aiming for. Always do spin the wheels up quite... Uh, quite well. In fact, we can still spin the wheels up in... <laughs> Hello. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of wheel spin off the line. I was kind of expecting this car to not spin the wheels as much through there. I really, yeah, that was... Um, that's a lot of wheel spin from, uh, from a car. Oh, please get down. I know we've got a lot of power when we are in the wet. I was kind of expecting to find some grip at some point, though, with having such giant tyres. Uh, now we're going to be fighting with quite a lot of understeer through here. We're not going to get anywhere near the puddle there because we can't turn in. And the back end's going to go almost around on us. Uh-oh. Uh yeah, we've got to fight. This is a section that Mercury is not going to like very much. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> not particularly fond of uh, that part. Maybe. No, 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 no. That's bad. Uh, okay. We're, we're, off, we're off the track. Well, I found a new place to have issues. Um... Oh god, now we're going to have issues over the other side. Uh, right. Calm. We're good. We're pointing in the right direction still. It was only a minor a minor thing. Uh, when I was kind of contemplating changing of the circuit, uh, one thing that I wasn't really expecting as much to have on, on this track is uh, the, the kind of sticking a wheel on the... Uh, like a rear wheel on the grass. Uh, there are a couple of places at uh, Brands Hatch where it's so easy to stick that rear wheel. On, on the grass somewhere. Oh, let's get on the brakes nice and early down here because I'm not quite sure. Okay, we can probably brake a little bit later. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of places where it's very easy to stick the, the rear wheel on the grass and um, I, I was kind of expecting perhaps not quite to have that uh, so much here. To be fair, I didn't actually go off too many times at, uh, at Brands with, uh, with that particular manoeuvre, but it has, I have seen it happen many times in, uh, in uh, racing. Oh! Ah! Um, things have gone quite surprisingly wrong. What the? <laughs> I was about to come to my next point and we rolled. Um, I'm not quite sure how I managed that. That's a, a thing. So my next point was going to be kind of continuing from the not expecting to put a wheel on the grass as much. Was going to be about the curbs. The curbs at this circuit are nowhere near as mean as as Brands Hatch. The, certainly, the outside of Turn One at uh, at the Indy Circuit, or the outside of Turn One at Brands, sorry, is horrible for putting a wheel on and kind of just spitting cars into the scenery. And we had seen a number of vehicles roll. I wasn't expecting to see cars roll here, and our first vehicle out immediately goes over on its first flying lap. Well, that theory has gone well and truly out of the window. Right. Well, there we go. That's an adventure for today. This car does not like the bumps coming down that uh, that main straight. It is bucking about all over the place, not helped by some of the uh, puddles. Now, we've got to try and be neat and tidy through here. Patience is going to be key, I think. 
uh, for that first section. Don't try and get on the power. It's not just about the wheel spin. We've also got to worry about the uh, relatively large amounts of uh, understeer from this car. We don't have a huge amount of grip, really, for getting through these turns. We've also got to be uh, rather aware of the curbs. Oh, that sign. I might, if we get a dodgy lap, I might have to go and whack that sign to get it out of the way. They are surprisingly irritating on here. We've found in, especially with the little cars, vehicles like this doesn't affect them too much. We have seen vehicles fired off the track from glancing off of a, off of a sign. They can be quite an awkward ugh, thing. That puddle is actually a lot worse than I initially thought. Maserati we were never going to have a problem with, but with these with these silly cars, if they start sliding, you kind of slide on the exit of the corner and then you end up sliding towards the puddle and then that's really quick and easy way to get a twitch and fire your car off the, off the track. Right, 13.8 is our sort of first flying lap where we weren't upside down at some point. Oh, I might have left that too late under braking. Oh, that is such a big stop. Oh, that was... Uh, that was about the limit of what the Mercury can uh, could do down there. Oh, come on. Get turned. Please get turned. Please get turned. There we go. Oh, we ran a little bit wide on the exit, though. That's going to be a problem. Now we sit and wait. Oh, we sit and wait some more. And don't play on that curb, because that curb is a vicious bugger. Uh, trying to carry speed down here is... Uh, yeah, a little bit of a pain. Uh, that side is well and truly in. I'm not sure if that was side or if that was curb that uh, got us in trouble there. It could have been a combination of the pair of them. Somehow we still got some <laughs> some lap time, and then we're going to slide our way around there now. Break nice and I uh, tried to break nice and early. Dear God, we don't turn in. It just doesn't get turned for that corner. We're going to have to break really early, I think, for that part of the track next time around. Because next time around is going to be our final. Final run. Now, this final sector is uh, causing me some problems. I think I'm actually going to go to uh, Bonnet View for this one. That smashed up windscreen is uh, causing me too many visibility issues. This is it. This is going to be the one, much like with the Maserati. This is going to be the one that uh, counts 173 miles an hour. Yeah, much higher speeds down here. And uh, this is one thing that the city cars are going to have the advantage over the Maserati. At, uh, at this track, they can use their acceleration a bit more. They will get to a far higher top speed down there than the uh, than the Maserati race car. But it's through these next corners where oh, this vehicle is going to be struggling. Try and keep the uh, the rear end in check. The sign is clear and out of the way. Yeah, we are on two wheels around there. Oh, come on, front end. Please get turned. Please get turned. Try and find some traction. Oh, we're going nice and quick this time out. Now I can actually see where I'm bloody going. Things are much better. Right, we're going to break nice and early. That was much neater. Much better through there. Up towards this uh, final couple of corners frantically try and slow the car down oh we got a burst of wheel spin halfway around the turn but we are through neatly now try not to get too much wheel spin coming out of that corner it's the run towards the line what are we going to do lap time wise whoa that was close <laughs> oh that was a monster of a final lap that was a that was absolutely flying around there that's a lot closer than i thought it was going to be that is a hell of a lot closer than I thought it was going to be. I really thought that the, um, these kind of cars were not going to be quick around here. I might have been wrong. I might have been quite badly wrong. Because, uh, yeah, the, the Mercury Coupe is not far off whatsoever. I will be honest, that was a, that was a, a blistering final lap. I was very, very pleased with, uh, with that one. Um, yeah, it is. We're only talk we're talking less than two tenths of a second off the Maserati race car. This is a thousand horsepower Mercury Coupe in the pouring rain at a very demanding circuit, and it's less than less than two tenths off. Well, the benchmark still stands, but only just. Equally, the Mercury did end up on its roof very early on. But there we go. I'm liking this track. I'm liking this track as a uh, <laughs> silly car build circuit already. Anyway, it is now time to find out just how quickly the Mercury will go in a straight line. And of course, that means bringing the Mercury to Le Mans. Now, while we do have near enough 1,000 horsepower in this car, it's not exactly the best, uh, best shape for cutting through the air. I'm not expecting it to be setting any speed records. It might still do relatively 
well though what are we reckoning here 204 miles an hour at the moment let's dump the aero off the car and then we will see what we can do with gearing 207.4 we have humongous gear ratios. <laughs> Apparently it's a six-speed gearbox in this. I don't think I used more than three, probably, at uh, Virginia. That can be quite useful if, if the car has that kind of gear ratio from from standard. It can be useful when dealing with the, the wet circuits. Uh, 207.4, it doesn't really matter where I put it, whether I put it there with kind of relatively sensible or whether we only use about four gears, it's going to do about 207. It's pretty much when the aerodynamics give up on the car, where it just can't can't cut through the air anymore. I would imagine we'll probably get a much, yeah, much a much better start uh, in drive. It actually spins its wheels uh, for, for quite a while. Um, oh yeah, it's seeing as, well, of course, we're going to have a new table of results for the um, for the circuit, I will keep the same table for the speed runs because nothing's really changed in that regard. This car is already gone up on two wheels once around here. I kind of fear. Oh, there we go. We've got some grip roll going on, and yep, <laughs> we got full-on grip roll with the Mercury Coupe. I wasn't quite expecting that uh, from the car. We often see it with. The SUVs and the vans and so on, when you put race tyres on them, you can get grip roll. They have much higher centre of masses than, than this. I mean, yeah, this hasn't got the lowest, certainly, but I wasn't thinking we are going to get grip roll. Right, we might have an interesting time at the end of the straight. Not quite sure what might happen with this car. We are at 180 miles an hour as we come onto the straight, and we are at two wheels at 180. That's quite impressive, I think, for <laughs> this car. Up to 200 miles an hour now. We have cracked the 200 mile an hour mark. It's still pulling relatively well, but we are going to hit that uh, that wall pretty much where we can't go any faster. 206. Oh, I want that one more mile an hour out of you, Coop. We can do one more. One more mile an hour. Oh, I can't want it to start going downhill. The bumps are a little bit of a pain for this car. One more mile an hour. Stop. Hey, there we go. 207. We did it, 207 miles an hour in the Mercury Coupe. Now we are going to tackle the kink at the end of the straight. We're on two wheels at 190, and we're round, though. Didn't even lift for, <laughs> for that. Yeah, we are on We were on two wheels through that section, but it made it around. I'm actually quite surprised. With cars like this, sometimes with the softer suspension, uh, you can you can get away with, with the bumps. Sometimes it survives alright, other times it will just fire the car at walls, and with this uh, wanting to grip roll, I was kind of afraid we'd have the uh, fire at wall. But, oh, I fired a tyre wall, that was a dumb thing. Uh, <laughs> but it made it around the corner. 207 is, is not too bad considering what the what the vehicle what the vehicle is, and then we'll have some, some more celebratory donuts from the Mercury. It's uh, straight line speed it is going to be down the bottom of the table. We are a couple of hundred horsepower down on some of the very fastest cars, and the shape is fairly awful, really. So that uh, 207 miles an hour will put it into 23rd place. It beats the Fiat 595, the Willys Jeep, the VW Campervan, Pontiac Aztec, uh, all the really ridiculous vehicles. However, it gets beaten by, well, everything else really. The Alfa Romeo P3, Plymouth Fury, Mazda RX-3, Subaru Brat is 13 miles an hour quicker than than the Mercury. Uh, but, uh, yeah, while the straight line speed was never likely to be the most impressive, the uh, the lap time, I thought it did pretty well for such a such a nasty circuit. Well, there we go. That is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.